Okay, so let's see if you know enough math to understand this math question and more importantly, how to solve it. Okay, so here is the problem. Seven more than twice an integer is between negative three and a positive nine. And we wanna find all possible values that are solutions to this problem. Okay, now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna fully explain this uh, problem. Okay, so one more time, seven more than twice an integer. Now, if you don't know what an integer is, of course, you're going to have a tough time uh, with this problem, but uh, I will fully explain all of this in just one moment. But uh, seven more than twice an integer, an integer is between negative three and a positive nine. What are all possible values that are solutions to this problem? Well, let's take a look at the uh, actual answer. The correct uh, answer is this set of numbers right here. And all these numbers are integers. So we have negative four, negative three, negative two, and negative one, and zero. Okay, now, if you got this right, will you definitely get a happy face and the A plus if you're like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even understand the problem. What's going on here? Well, this is actually not that difficult, but of course we need to understand, you know, the words in this problem. So let's see exactly how to solve this math question right now. Okay, so first things first, uh, one, we have a math problem, a math word problem. So I always like to use the rule of three, read a problem at least three times to try to figure out what's going on. And in particular, make sure you understand the question. So this problem involves this word right here. Okay, seven more than twice an integer. We have to be crystal clear on what an integer is because if we don't understand what an integer is, we're not gonna be able to figure out this problem, right? So that's gonna be one aspect of this problem. Of course, I'll explain what an, what an integer is here in a second. But we have this integer, and of course it's uh, seven more than twice uh, this integer, but it's between these values in uh, negative three and nine. So right here, this between part is uh, kind of, you know, a flag telling ourselves, oh, we need to set up an inequality. Okay, so we gotta figure out what this is, and then this right here is we need to set up an inequality, and let's go ahead and get into it right now. Okay, so we're dealing with an integer, right? So I'm just going to just say, let's let x equal an integer. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. But what is an integer? Well, let's go ahead and just quickly review. This is very, very important stuff. Maybe use a different color here. Okay, so on a real number line, all right, so here is zero, and we have, uh, well, actually, let's kind of do a, a quick, quick, fast review, because this is really important as well. I'm trying to draw a straight line. That's a little bit better. Okay, <laughs> so here is uh, the real number line. So in mathematics, the set of real numbers is tremendously important. Now, the set of real numbers is uh, composed of, of a uh, subset of different type of numbers. The first numbers are called natural numbers or counting numbers. If you look at the, or the digits of your hand, right, you got one, two, three, four, et cetera. These are called the counting numbers. This is what we count with, one, two, three, four, et cetera. The counting numbers or the natural numbers, all right? This is what uh, these type of numbers are called. Now, these again are a subset of the real numbers. Okay, these are on the real number line. And now if we throw in zero, we have what type of numbers? Well, these numbers right here are called the whole numbers. Now, if we take uh, these positive whole numbers and then we throw on some negative whole numbers over here, same numbers, but we'll put negative signs in front of these numbers, these whole numbers right here, all these numbers, are what we call the integers, okay? These are the integers, and usually it's just one big I uh, to kind of refer to that set. But this is important stuff, okay? If you're taking mathematics, you gotta understand uh, these different uh, subsets. And then there's two other uh, numbers that I'm not mentioning. Do you know what they are? Okay, well, if you do, put that into the comment section as well. And I'll talk about the different uh, two more types of uh, sets of numbers that are com uh, composed of the real numbers or a subset of the real numbers, those would be the rational numbers and the irrational numbers, okay? Now, the rational numbers are fractions that we can make out of integers, so things like two-thirds or negative two-thirds, and the numbers that we cannot 
uh, express as a, a fraction, okay, i.e. numbers that are not rational or irrational. And these would be numbers like pi, for example, uh, 3, uh, 0.14, etc., etc., or the square root of 2. Uh, these type of things or these type of numbers are irrational numbers, okay? All right, so just a quick overview of the real numbers and specifically the integers because, you know, you might come across a prompt that uses the word whole number or county number, natural number, or rational number. Got to understand what these math terms are. Okay, so that is what an integer is. And now let's go back to our problem. So we have seven more than twice an integer. So we'll let a variable, that variable x, represent an integer, right? Because we're trying to solve this problem and uh, we don't know what integer, but let's just let x equal this integer, okay? So there's two aspects to this problem. We have seven more than twice an integer. Let's figure out, let's come up with an algebraic expression for that part. And then this is going to be between uh, negative three and nine. So we'll set up an inequality once we have this part right here kind of constructed from an algebraic standpoint. All right, so seven more. What does this right here mean, seven more? We're gonna take uh, seven and add it on to something. But what are we gonna add it on to? Uh, twice an integer. So maybe like two times x, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So two x plus seven is seven more. This is seven more than twice an integer. All right, seven more than twice an integer. Make sure that you don't multiply seven, okay? A lot of uh, students get confused with this. This is why it's so important to do two things. One, you gotta read these problems carefully, but two, you need to practice solving various type of prompts. All right, so this is uh, our expression two x plus seven for this part. Seven more than twice an integer is between. So this, whatever this is, is between these numbers, negative three and nine. All right, so we're gonna set up an inequality now. So two x plus seven, or seven more than twice an integer, is uh, between negative three and nine. Of course, negative three is gonna be over here and nine is gonna be over here. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is solve this compound inequality. All right, so do you know how to solve this? Well, hopefully you do, and if you do not, well, you absolutely must know how to solve this. Let me give you a couple of quick suggestions. Uh, if you are studying math and need help with inequalities, one, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel, or two, you can learn this stuff in my algebra courses. You'll find links to all those courses in the description below. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't interrupt this lovely video if it wasn't that important, not only for me, okay? I wouldn't be, uh, you know, truthful if it wasn't, yes, my own personal ambitions to grow my YouTube channel. Yes, indeed, but really, I'm on YouTube to help others. I love teaching math, and, you know, without students, then, you know, it's not really fun just talking to myself. So by you subscribing, it does help that algorithm get my content out to more people. And, uh, you know, I want to reach people, reach people that are interested in math, uh, maybe just enjoy mathematics. That's awesome as well. But particularly, I'm trying to reach people that are struggling in math and maybe on the verge of giving up or, you know, turning into somebody who doesn't like math. OK, that's the worst uh, thing that I've seen. Where people are like, I hate math. Now, why do you hate math? Well, because it might be frustrating to you. You're like, ah, it's just so complicated, so boring. Well, it's my job to try to give math a better reputation, right? And the way I try to do that is through clear and understandable instruction and giving you a ton of encouragement. Please do not quit, okay? Uh, you can do much, much better in math, but you also have to be willing to put in the work as well. There are no shortcuts. If somebody is telling you, you can take a shortcut here, shortcut there, uh, da, da, da. and if you're trying to take shortcuts, you are going to be frustrated. But if you build up your skills over time, you could be successful. All right, so thank you so much. And if you're going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. All right, back to the problem. Okay, so here we go. We have our lovely uh, linear inequality. Now, how do we solve uh, these, uh, well, actually, this is a compound inequality, excuse me. Let me show you the difference real quick, okay? If I have something like 2x is less than 8, we would refer to this as a linear inequality. Uh, now, if we have a compound inequality, this is what we're talking about, like and and or statements. So this is a pretty big topic, but uh, this is where values are now in between two numbers, okay? This would be an and situation, okay, like this right here. A number 
is between uh, uh, five and 10. Okay, and again, uh, this would be an example again of a compound inequality, but I could also write a situation like this, x is less than three and x is greater than eight. Okay, so maybe we have some sort of situation where uh, this would be a representation of the solution. Okay, this is an or situation, x is less than three or x is greater than eight. So you're dealing with and and or statements and in mathematics and inequality, these are called compound inequalities. Now, back to our problem, the way we solve compound inequalities is very similar to solving uh, linear equations, okay? So you gotta know how to solve equations in order to solve uh, compound inequalities. And effectively, what we wanna do is get that x in the middle, okay? X in the middle of um, you know, all by itself between these two inequality symbols. And we have to be very careful, particularly if there's like a negative sign in front of a coefficient of the x. So if we are dealing with a situation like this, what happens in this scenario? Now, I'm trying to teach you a lot quickly, but in this scenario, you have to be on full alert because anytime you multiply or divide all sides of an inequality by a negative number, the uh, inequality symbols reverse. Okay, and that is a huge thing. We're not dealing with that in this particular problem, but I could just as easily made this problem more complex. But anyways, be aware of that because um, it's a very typical error that students make um, when dealing with compound or linear inequalities. Okay, so here is our setup. So we're gonna solve this just like a uh, linear equation. And what we're gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're gonna subtract seven from all sides of the inequality. All right, so negative three minus seven, uh, two x plus seven, we're gonna subtract seven, and then nine minus seven, and we're simply gonna add down in a column manner. So negative three uh, minus seven is, of course, negative uh, 10, and that's gonna be in between this two x plus seven. Now we just have our two x by itself, and then nine minus seven is two. Okay, so what do you think our next move is? Well, if you said, uh, I think we have to divide by two, uh, Mr. UT Math Man, you would be correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at that step right now. <clears throat> All right, so let me just clear my voice here real quick. I don't have my water handy. Probably with all the videos I make, I probably should have water, tea, coffee, just like within arm's reach. But anyways, let's go ahead and finish this problem up. All right, so I'm gonna divide everything by two, okay? And when I do that, we're gonna end up with negative five is less than x is less than one. Okay, now remember the problem. The problem said, or uh, the question was, uh, what are all possible values for x? Now, what is x? x is an integer. So you gotta be careful here because uh, not all the numbers that are greater than negative five or less than one are solutions. It's only integers, and we could see this better on a graph. Okay, so here is uh, this right here um, expressed as a graph when x is an integer, okay? So if we think, uh, but all the values between negative five and positive one are gonna be this. We have negative five, okay, this is, you know, if I was to graph this, and if x was just any number, the actual graph would be a circle here, or a parenthesis like this, and then a line going all the way over to one. So in other words, one and negative five are not part of the solution. If this was less than or equal to, and less than or equal to over here, then I would simply fill in uh, these, um, circles. Again, I'm throwing a lot out of, uh, out to you because I want to make sure that you uh, are seeing some aspects of dealing with inequalities. And if, you know, if you're lost here, this is definitely, you know, I, uh, you know, telling you, hey, you need to review this topic. But anyways, the question is all possible values for X on the, and X, again, X is an integer. Okay. So what X, uh, integers do we have that are greater than negative five and less than one? Well, we can kind of see it here, right? So greater than negative five and less than one, we have negative four, that's an integer. The next one is negative three, the next one is negative two, the next one negative one, and then zero, of course, is an integer as well. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. 
All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.